champions. You know the desert rats like a little uh, disco. Hey, I'm Lana. I'm Casey, and we are Class C Broads. If you can't tell, we are at Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. We'll give you some tips on staying here, because you'll be boondocking, and we'll tell you all about the monument's namesake. So stick around. Because we're Class C What's so special about this place? This guy right here. This is the Oregon Pipe Cactus, and it only grows right here in the U.S. Yeah, you can find them south in Mexico, but in the U.S., you've got to come to Oregon Pipe National Monument to see them. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, what's the difference between a saguaro and an organ pipe cactus? The saguaro branches in the middle of the trunk, and the organ pipe cactus will branch only at its base. And so they kind of look like, I don't know, a candelabra or an organ pipe. So one of the things that we've learned about camping in the desert is that the wildlife comes out at night. In particular, the desert pack rat loves to get in vehicles, their hoods, and chew up the wires. It's kind of like a cave-like structure that they like to get in. So the park rangers have told us that at least anecdotally, if you put your hood up and put a light in the engine compartment, they have had no reports of any of the pack rats eating the wires. So that's what we're doing and that's what a lot of other campers are doing here as well. For the RV, we have some rock lights that light up the entire undercarriage. We also put a puck light in the engine compartment for the RV as well. If we want to get crazy. You know the desert rats like a little uh, disco. One of the things that I really started to enjoy about our trips to the national parks are the ranger talks. And here at the Oregon Pipe National Monument, there have been ranger talks at 10, 2, and 6.30 in the evening. And they really haven't been very crowded because the campground's not been very crowded. So it's nice to kind of have that intimate experience with the uh, park rangers. The evening session is usually held at this amphitheater, which is right by the Twin Peaks campground. And the evening session is usually on critters like bats. We have an old mine uh, tunnel here that has what's believed to be the largest maternity roost in the country of this bat. We think we have about 50,000 female <laughs> lesser long nose. Now, bats play an important part in the organ pipe cactus life cycle. The organ pipe cactus only blooms at night, usually in the very hot sort of beginning summer months of May and June. And they come here, they give birth, they go out to feed, they are feeding on these, on these flowers, they go from one to another, you know, they might travel miles in one night visiting a lot of different organ pipe cactus. They stay around because after the cactus bloom, they form a fruit. Uh, it's edible for people and for critters, and the bats really like it too. So not only are they pollinating the flowers on this, they're eating the fruit and dispersing the seed. So they're super important to the ecosystem. So this looks like a little baby organ pike cactus, but it's actually probably around 30 or 40 years old. 
in the first 10 years or so of the cactus's life, it's really only a few inches tall. And at about 30 years is when it starts growing its first stem. And then it doesn't start flowering until, oh, year 35, 40 or so. And when it does grow, it grows from the very tip. It would be very rare that the cactus would branch in the middle of one of these stalks. And then after it reaches 35 or 40, it grows about two and a half inches a year. The average height of one of these is uh, about 16 feet. And the average width is about 12 or so feet, although I think they can get up to 25 feet or so tall. So some of these cactuses that you see out here are super old. I'm gonna get out my 100 foot tape measure and uh, see if I can find the world's largest organ pipe while we're out here. It'd be the world's largest and probably the world's oldest. Yeah, I'll probably poke my eye out too. She probably will. So this organ pipe cactus looks like it's getting ready to have some new growth and there's this little nub on it for lack of a better word and it's got this bright sort of red vibrant color to it. Pretty cool. The Twin Peaks campground inside of the monument has 174 RV sites and an additional 34 tent sites. 112 of those RV sites are generator. You can run your generator during certain hours, but there's no water or sewer at your site. All of the sites are boondocking only. There is water throughout the park, spigots that you can fill up at, and there is a dump station. You're on a concrete pad that is semi-level, so it's really not hardcore boondocking. Yeah, this is like glamping boondocking here. But one tip is that you do need to bring all of your provisions with you because it's not like there's a Walmart 20 minutes away. Or even a grocery store yeah. 20 minutes away. Yeah, a good grocery store is probably going to be about 40 minutes away. You really are out in the middle of nowhere in the desert. So come prepared with suitable provisions gas or propane or diesel for your generator and food we've been on a number of the scenic drives and trails here at oregon pipe national monument and in my opinion i think the best place to see the oregon pipe cactus is actually at the twin peaks campground itself it feels like we're kind of really in uh, the heart of where a lot of the cactuses are now they're mixed in with swaros but there's a good number of oregon pipe cacti right here at the campground <laughs> You can walk your dogs on the perimeter trail, but we quickly learned that there were a lot of these guys on it, jumping Choya, and that gets in their little pawpaws and their face, and it hurts them. So we've basically decided to walk the dogs on the asphalt around the campground. That's your tip for the day, if you have dogs. is a desert view nature trail that sort of snakes around the group camping area where not only are there just a number of Oregon pipe cacti but there are also some just amazing views. Walking by this organ pipe, we thought it was diseased, but then on closer inspection, the things that are like sticking to it look like little seed pods. So we're thinking maybe that's how they propagate. It's time to go look for scorpions. Around 6.30 at night, I go out with my black light pick over some rocks and look for scorpions because they glow under the black light. Be aware that the scorpion you took a picture of is called the Arizona Bark Scorpion. 
Of all the scorpions in the world, it is the fastest. It can go almost one meter a second. So you want to be careful kicking the rocks over. The park ranger also told me that in terms of all the scorpion species out there, this one ranks in the top 20 in terms of the most venomous. I mean, this guy is a was a bad guy. <laughs> so I think our tip here is that you should bring a black light with you to the monument. And that's also because the scorpions like to kind of hang out underneath camping chairs, as well as underneath the amphitheater benches and other places like that. So it might be good to have a black light just to kind of check for scorpions if you're out at night. But the other tip is don't hunt scorpions. Well, come on. In addition to the organ pipe cactus, you'll find swarrows, prickly pears, choya, all the kind of cactuses you're normally used to seeing. But then there's another special cactus here called the Sunita, which is right behind us. The Sunita is rare in the United States, but it does grow here. And it's very distinctive. It's also known as the old man cactus. And if you kind of look at the top, you'll see some kind of a beard it's got on its on its tips. And it also has fewer spines than the organ pipe cactus. And you can find the Sunitas along this road to Sunita Basin. That's a clever name. Yeah, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. We are taking the scenic drive at Oregon Pipe today and it's along a dirt road that's 41 miles long. It's Porto Blanco Road and part of it's one way. Yeah, we've kind of reached the point of no return. So once we start down this path, there's no turning back. And you need a high clearance vehicle to do it. There's supposed to be a lot more organ pipe cacti as we progress along the road, so we'll see. There's several signs warning folks of possible smuggling and illegal immigration. That's because the route does go right by the border. to do a hike while we're on this uh, scenic drive. We are going to Dripping Springs. It's a one and a half about mile hike. Most of it's pretty easy, then it gets steep, but we're supposed to see a beautiful view from the top. Do you think it's gonna drip today? It did rain on the way down. Yeah, I bet, I bet it's just gonna be flooding up there. <laughs> oh, shush. <laughs> This is it. This is the majesty right here. You're gonna eat this. Well, we made it to the spring. It is not a river. It is not flooding. It is it's, dripping. It's a drip. It's a leaky faucet. So worth the detour? Um, I don't know. I mean, all we're seeing is cactus, so it's kind of good to get a little circulation going, I guess. We got to see the cactuses from a different perspective, so that was cool. So far, Casey? Uh, so far, you could take a car down it. I mean, it's just about like any country road in Oklahoma. But I think that it's supposed to get more uh, treacherous as we go. And we decided that we think it's one way because there are a lot of just turns where they're blind corners. And so that's probably the most dangerous part and why it's one way. So we 
just hit the two-way traffic again and now we're going to see Frito Burrito! Quito Baquito. Quito Baquito. Huh? Quito Baquito. Quito Baquito. Quito Baquito. Quito Baquito. Quito Baquito. Frito Burrito. 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 Chiquita Banana. This is kind of hard to say, but just remember, Frito Burrito. Quito Baquito. craziest walking video that we've ever done because we're right by the wall in Mexico. Well, we're in America, but that's the wall right there. Crazy. And we're not going to debate whether it's a good thing or bad thing. We're just here to see the, the, fish. the Quito Baquito and eat our Fritos and burritos. This is pretty cool. This is crazy. This is nuts, just in the middle of the desert. We did see what we think were endangered baby pupfish, but they weren't blue because it's not mating season. There was a blue dragonfly though. So for thousands of years, people have been coming to this spring because it's really one of the only sources of water in the area. So pretty remarkable. Yeah, I mean, we're surrounded by desert and then there's this thriving little spring. It's got fish in it, you know, things are living around it. It's pretty cool. about and read about the wall on TV and in the newspaper and it's it's just interesting to see it up close and personal periodically you'll see some blue flags and that means that there's some sort of water station there for the immigrants asylum seekers like that You know, we always like to start our exploration of a national park, or in this case, a national monument at the visitor center. But this visitor center actually has a very sad past. Back in 2002, a park ranger named Chris Eggle was killed in the line of duty from a drug smuggler coming up from Mexico. And the park named the visitor center in his honor the following year in 2003. In light of that, a majority of the park actually closed for a number of years and didn't fully reopen until 2014. And when it did reopen, there were a lot more security measures. There's a, an enhanced border patrol. And of course, now we have the wall. We've been in the park about a week and we feel very safe here. We've done hikes. There, there hasn't been any issues for us. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it feels just like any other national park or monument. And I would recommend coming here. I think the top arch looks like the Michelangelo painting where the fingers touch. Sistine Chapel, Spark of Life. You think that's what it's called? I think so. I think it's called Touchy Touchy. <laughs> Today we are driving the Ajo Mountain Drive, which is a 21 mile drive. And part of it's paved, part of it's dirt, part of it's one way. So you kind of have to commit 
there is a trail called the Arch Trail, which is where we're at right now. Um, part of it's maintained. Is This is all about parts. Part of it's maintained, part of it isn't. We did the maintained part, which doesn't take you to the arch, and you can't really see it from there. So if you just want to look at it, the parking lot's probably your best bet. So that's your tip of the day. If you enjoy the spike, hit the like. Oh, that's good. If you enjoy the spike, hit the like. Okay. Wait, wait. If you enjoy this hike, hit the like. And remember, whether you're on the road or on the web, stay classy. Cheers. It's a little windy, so I don't know if you can hear this, but we can pretty much see the entire campground from this vantage point on the Desert View Trail. Except for your head is in the way. There you go. The park is also home to some endangered pupfish and also some, not killer bees, but suicide bees. They've been impaling themselves on these cactuses, which nobody knows really why. Look at those things. So let us know what you think of Casey's new hairdo. Do you like it? And if you do like it, hit that like button. If you don't like it, hit that like button. And consider subscribing to the channel. Leave some comments and let me know. I mean, you can be totally anonymous and say you look like shit, but I just need to know, guys.